value higher. So if you have a three bathroom house, you might be assessed $20,000 more than the same house with a two bathroom house. But now take that $20,000 and divide it by 1,000, which is the new assessed rate. So now you're seeing an assessment difference of $200, 200. Uh, I'm sorry, 20. 20. Yeah, okay, you're right, it's 20. I've done this before, but I am fine. Okay, so now your assessed value because of that extra bathroom is $20 higher times the tax rate. It may be costing you $200 a year to have that extra bathroom. But if you call the county in to change that extra bathroom, they have the right to add anything they see. Updates to the outside, things that aren't permitted, a dex, um, extra bathrooms, high-end you know, fixtures, high-end, you know, whatever they see, that's supposed to pick up. Now, incredibly, the legislature, and it, you know, Laura Curran uh, vetoed this, was going to, what they wanted to pass a law that if you invited the assessor in to change the number of bathrooms, that the assessor couldn't change things they saw. So if an assessor walked in to change the number of bathrooms because you want, and they see that you have a finished basement and rec room, they couldn't add that. Well, that's encouraging fraud, okay? If you have unpermitted work and the assessor comes in, they're supposed to catch it. That is their job. They are supposed to make sure your home is a fairly assessed based upon what's in your home. And if that means they have to add value to your home, they have to add value to your home. That doesn't make them bad people. And it doesn't, it's not a bad thing because guess what? If they add value to your home for the unpermitted, people that do their work unpermitted, okay, you did it permitted, but if they do it unpermitted and they add value to these homes properly, tax rate goes down for everybody else. Not a lot, but it does. And that's the way it's supposed to work. So, once you confirm that you're one family home, that this is the right property, that this is the assessed value that they have you at for the 21, 22 year. Now, if you want to, you want to see how you've done on prior assessments, you can go here and look. It'll show you that. We don't have to do it. Just, we got a little bit of um, And if you want to come over here. You want to make sure the lot size is about right. You want to make sure the living area is about right. Um, full bath, half bath, two car garage, year built. Now that house, you, you did, did you build it in 2007? Did you buy it new? Did you? Okay. About in 2007. And it was new construction? First grade. Okay, and then it's been renovated since? Just the outside. Okay. But now, um, if you're going to renovate, join the group and ask your question. Because people ask this question all the time. I'm putting in, a, somebody last week was complaining that he put in a dormer, a dormer. And did you see, remember this question? He said, I put in a dormer and they raised my assessment to $600,000. Well, he lives in a really nice section of Wanton. And he doubled, more than doubled the size of his house. When you more than double the size of your house, they treat it as new construction, as if it was a new home, because they figure you're not only adding up, but you're renovating the first floor too. It's a pretty good assumption. Um, so they treat these as gut renovations. So you want to work with an architect and ask your questions. You don't want your, you know, as opposed to being a renovation, you don't want to double the size of your house, more than double. The other thing is that there's an exemption for doing certain types of additions on your house. And if you go up more than 50% of the uh, property size and increase the home size by more than 50%, you don't get that exemption. You only get the exemption after all your permits are filed. So your permits are filed, you then seek the exemption, and what it does is it phases in the increased tax assessment on your property for eight years. For a question. Sure. I had a mother and daughter. Yes. Now I have a, now I have a senior citizen. Okay, so, so I'm considered still a one family. Yeah, no, you're not. You're a two family. If you have an <laughs> if, if you have an accessory apartment, you should be, it'll probably show two family up there. Okay. And you, it's fair. You know, you know, it's, it. Yeah, that's right. You're getting an income and from it. Okay. Now, now, if it's occupied by a family member, you got an argument that you know it shouldn't be. Yep. Yeah. But if but if it is occupied as a family member, I'm not asking you. Don't. We're not reporting you. But if it's a real family <coughs> member, like a mother daughter, you have an argument that this is really a one family with an extra kitchen, 
we treat it as a one family. I have access to the entire house. They have access to the entire house. Um, but that's usually not the case. Yeah. But you always have an argument. All right, so what do you do? Once you confirm the data and the information, you click on Find Sales. Next question. Yes? What happened here in the picture? You don't see the view of the garage. And it's because it's in a different as, as a body. In other words, you don't see your garage in the picture? Yeah. Don't worry about it. It means, it means the assessor doesn't see your garage either. <laughs> no, it's actually, I found it in, in, in another assessment. Okay, you found it on somebody else's property? Again, don't worry about it. Okay? I mean, I wish they replaced my house with a little shack in the photo. It would mean a thing. All right? As long as the address, as long as the information about the property is right, that's all you need to know. Don't, don't, I wouldn't worry about a photo. Okay, so look at this. These are the photos in your neighborhood. And 159 Oakley, which is a third of a mile away, sold for 675. And 188 Oakley sold for 630. Now, by the way, these homes on Oakley, did anybody live on Oakley? Three years ago, they were $450,000. That's how fast your market here has accelerated, right? You know this, because you're, because you're, you bought a new home and now you're making it even newer, all right? So you know this, you, this was, Elmont was a, is a gold mine. <coughs> purchasing, you know. Um, but yeah, so these homes on Oakley, four year, three, four years ago, were 450, maybe pushing five. Um, but these all look like kind of good comparables. This one's even a lot smaller than yours. You see that? Yeah. We're gonna have a hard time finding pictures. Oh, we can go to South Floral Park. Yeah, we'll choose that one. But you know what's gonna happen when the appraiser gets that one, when the assessor gets that one? This is your photo. <laughs> and you're going to say, oh, the gold did it for me. The gold's full of it. All right. I wouldn't know if we choose that one. And you see what happens now is we're getting homes further and further away. But we'll choose this one on Kiefer. It's a little cheaper. Um, it's really, and it's a half mile away. You got to see, the county, you know, did a job. They got your home, you know, if not a little under-assessed, really pretty close. All right, what, what's on the next page, too? Yeah, we can choose this. That's not bought bad. <coughs> this, house, this house is a good one. Excuse some me. colonial and some are ranch. The, the county program fixes that. It adjusts. Uh, this is kind of far away. We'll, we'll try. Can we not look at that body area? No, it's not a big issue. It doesn't change much. I, I don't think that's right. All right. This house is how about the thing that was sold? The county program adjusts uh, typically in this area. It's about you know half a percent per month for you know since it's sold. It doesn't take you know time analysis. So, so you're not looking at the living area. I'll show you that. Just, I'll show you. Just looking at pricing. Yes, we're looking right now at pricing. Then we click on select check properties, and the houses come up on a chart. It shows you how far away they are. They show you the date the house sold. They you know, so what happens is they make adjustments based on the time of when the house sold. Um, they make adjustments based on the size of your lot. You know, they make adjustments based upon the number of baths. You see a bath, there's a three bathroom house, is $12,000 difference. So what are we looking at, 24, 12, $12, right? $12 on your assessment if you complain that they have an extra bathroom. Um, they look at your living area. If your the house is smaller, they add living space. If the house is larger, they take away money, you know, assess value. And again, if you want to have an idea of what this is, you know, divide by a thousand, you get an idea. So we found a few homes that work for you because after they compare to your home, we got a 470, a 555, a 548, and a 544. So they're not really the greatest. I mean, truthfully, if I was an appraiser and you skipped over the first four that we saw up there, I'd say we're probably not filing the honest grievance, um, but we're filing the best grievance we can for you. So, we click continue. I agree to proceed. And then you continue to submit an appeal. So you see the average adjusted value of those comparables is 529. Our taxable market value is 591. Ma'am, honest answer, no one's recording this for you put your house on the market for more than 591 under the sell, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, the county's got you right. You know, he's not telling anybody. Okay. <laughs>
But yeah, so the first three, the ones on Oakley, which are three blocks away, those are pretty good comparables for you. Now, the one thing you're looking at is since you bought in 2007, it's still, it's not new construction, but they still may compare you occasionally to new construction. I didn't see that here. Um, typically, you're considered new construction for 10 years. All right? So for new construction, if you bought a house, that was, let's say you bought your house in 2010, they would have the right to compare you to other new houses, which they didn't do. These are all old houses. Yes, ma'am? So I missed how you Well, so I was actually, I'll get to you. I was just, if you had her hand up a long time. I have a two-family. Two that's all you're going to get. Yeah, that's all you're going to get. And, you know, you might argue that, you know, um, you could, if you had to. If you think this house is exactly like yours, but they're not two family, they're one family, you could say, you know, my house is like this one, but with an extra kitchen, you know, or an extra bath. But typically, two families are, are assessed against other two families. Yes, ma'am? I missed how you selected the homes that you did. Based that on the price, or? Well, I did it based upon the price. Because if we use the three houses of Oakley, you aren't going to get a reduction. There was no chance of getting a reduction. So what we're doing is we're looking for houses that have sold less than yours, where you can at least look the assessor straight in the eye and say, these are comparables the county came up with, and they're fair comparables. Now, they, these were all larger homes, okay? These were all in Elmont. Only one was more than a half mile away. They're okay. They're not the best, but they're okay. Yes. But so wasn't hers at two hundred thousand, and the others were? At no, her house was at five hundred ninety-one thousand. Okay. So you don't want to use comparables that are higher than yours, because then you basically say the county's right. Now you've already said the county's right, but we're not. Right. All right. So what you do here is after you agree to proceed, it asks you what kind of property is. You say AR1, which is residential, one, two, or three family. Uh, Yvonne's name populates there, right? Yeah. Okay. Did you own the house alone? Yeah. Okay. So if you owned it with somebody else, you put both names in. Okay. That way they can talk to both people. Should they call and you not be there, somebody else can say, pick up the phone and, and answer questions for them. Um, I prefer to have one person in the family be the sole <coughs> person with the assessment review commission. Just that way, they, you know, there's no, everything doesn't get lost. One person should take the phone calls. What, what happens is after you file your grievance, in anywhere from eight to 12 months, you're gonna get a, you know, a letter, you're gonna, if it's a zero, you might reject it, that's what we're telling people to do. You might get a conference, you get a conference, you talk to the people about why you think you're supposed to get a reduction. All right, so you estimate that your house value is 529,000. If you thought that 529, that comes from the comps, it's self populated If you thought the 529 was still too high, you can take something off that, you can adjust it. But we're not gonna do that for you because they're already gonna think we got a problem. They're not gonna trust us. All right, um, actually that's not, I shouldn't say that's fair, true. Ms. Valentine's asset grievance that we're filing here is what my firm would do, is we're trying to keep you credible but we're also trying to get you a reduction. Um, you know, if you're choosing $400,000 houses and you're in a $600,000 house, that's not gonna work. But those other comparables were all on one street. They're not, they're not by commercial property. So we can argue that's the reason we skipped them. Okay, and that's what we're gonna argue. Yes? You said that we had to compare it to a houses that were around when we bought like the same price. But we bought our house 20 years ago. Well, that, no, you don't, you have to, compare yourself to the houses in your neighborhood that have sold. So, and you want to find houses that have sold within the last two years. So, even though you bought 20 years ago, there are still houses in your neighborhood that have sold in the last two years. Why? Prob you yes. said they have to be around the same amount that we bought on us then? No. no. All right. All right. That's your purchase thinking. price has oh. nothing to do with it unless you bought in the last two or three years. You bought, you bought in the last two or three years, you want to let them know this is what I paid. But if you bought more than that, it's not going to help you. All right, so we're going to come over here. You're self-representing, even though we're filing this for you. You're agreeing that I can sign it for you and send it in. Display. You paid 205000 in 2006. No? That's what it says you paid. 
Yeah. 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 Oh, that must be the person that yeah. bought the land. Yeah. Okay. So we don't care if that information is wrong. We leave that. Okay. You don't have to tell the county when you purchase the house and what you pay. All right. I don't care if it's you know ten years out of date, twenty years out of date. You don't have to change it. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. I've actually seen some people who paid less than what was there, and they changed it. Okay, but you don't have to. So um, they want. Let's scroll down. I need to work the whole thing. All right. Um, year build 2007. That's you know something you want to compare. You want to make sure that's right. Has any construction or alteration been started or completed within the last three years? They aren't talking a roof. They aren't talking, you know, siding or windows. They are talking, have you added a bathroom? Have you added a kitchen? Have you expanded the kitchen? Have you expanded the back of the house? Have you built a home? That's what they're looking to know. If you file a permit, they know. Yes, ma'am? I had my house lifted, but it didn't actually increase living space. Does okay, that, count? that doesn't count. Okay, you can put down, you know, lifted because of flooding. Right. Okay, lifted because of sandy. That is not supposed to increase your value because you lift. There's a caveat. To that. All these people in Long Beach, lifting in Long Beach, Freeport. Okay. Not quite the same, but getting closer. All these people in Long Beach lived in, you know, $379,000 bungalows. Sandy comes in and wipes them out. And in order to rebuild, they have to be raised. So they raise the house while renovating the inside. And you know what happened to these three hundred and seventy-nine thousand dollars bungalows? They're all selling for seven hundred and eighty-nine thousand dollars. So the people aren't happy because they want to live there. But when they do come on the market, they're selling for seven hundred and eighty-nine thousand dollars. They have to be assessed as if they're selling for seven hundred and eighty-nine thousand dollars. Raising the house isn't the re you know, doesn't create a higher assessment, but it can have the effect of increasing the value of the house so that you're going to be... Excuse me? Everything, I mean... Well, and, that, and that's something you might want to write in Part D. You know, the house has been raised, but everything's exactly the same. But a lot of people didn't keep it exactly the same. And so, um, so something like that, you just need to be a little careful. You need to stay on top of it. You need to say, you know, house has been raised, but we did no renovation inside. Okay, I mean, like, do the appliances count? No. Okay. Appliances don't count. Okay, um, cabinets might. Shh. <laughs> All right. Uh, has any construction or alteration, and they want to know the cost of the work. The cost of the work is really kind of deceptive because, well, just like I said, you do $130,000 in Long Beach, you raise a house and do put in a new kitchen and the house could jump, you know, triple, double in value. And I saw a house legitimately in Roswin, a uh, group member, they had a very small house in Roslyn, it would have been assessed, you know, it was a two bedroom house in Roslyn, one bath, and they made it into a four bedroom, three bath house. The renovation cost them $200,000, so they had a $400,000 house, they expanded it up, they expanded it out, they added, you know, two bedrooms and two baths, and now, it was every bit of a million dollar house in that market. So the cost of renovation, in most cases, you're really lucky if that's the only addition you get to pay. Um, you have to argue that if you, if you did work, then you're not going to see the money back. But it's, it's um, I think, a fairly fair question, what it costs you to do the work. Um, now, if you're out of the house because you're doing renovation, anybody in that situation? I have friends who are out of their house because they're doing renovation. I told them to call the Department of Assessment and tell them for this year, your house is unlivable. They've gotten permits, so they are someday when the house is livable again, they're going to pay through the nose. This, and the house they're building, they should be paying through the nose. But the point is that this year, January 2nd of this year, they couldn't live in the house. So they should get a reduction for this year. And once the permits are all filed and it's rebuilt, um, they'll go back up. The other thing to note, the county used to, you know, a lot of people here, don't, don't raise your hands, I don't need to see it, but, you know, people would open up a permit, do the work, and then conveniently forget to close the permit. They would always, they would close the permit. When I bought my house in Belmore, the first one, I had to have eight permits closed before they would just let the building close. They had 
a pool that wasn't permitted. They had a uh, second room that had been converted that hadn't been permitted. They had a laundry room that had been done that hadn't been converted. It was a nightmare, okay, all the inspections that hadn't been done. Um, now the county is a lot smarter. You take out a permit and you don't, you know, they assume after 18 months you did the work whether you closed the permit or not. So if you take out a permit and then don't end up doing the work, you need to call the county and tell them that we never did the work and they need to come and inspect because otherwise they're going to assume you did the work and they're going to assess you as if you did the work. All right. Uh, during your ownership, uh, have you expanded the house living area, converting a porch, attic, garage, etc.? Um, close to answer, honestly. Obviously, it may affect your assessment if they don't know about it now. Type of home, single family, name development of your homeowners association won't affect most of you. I don't know why it's still on there. The question, what is currently used for the owners and their families? And they put on that, they want to know, it's all you, right? You're the only one? So we're going to click uh, right here, home. Right here. Other one is higher. Oh, right here. <laughs> what part is currently used as a residence of the owner of that company? Oh. You don't, you don't have to fill out this whole section, but fill out, you can fill out as much of it as you want. Uh, they want to know, is it you know, offered to sell? Is it offered for rent? Uh, what is below the main part of the house? You have a basement. They know that because I saw the, you know, so we don't have to change that because they already know that. You don't have to fill in this section, the number of kitchens, the number of baths, unless their information is wrong. If they say you have two kitchens and you have one, you want to let them know, but then you also want to call the Department of Assessment and change that. All right, um, does the house have a one-car garage, central area? We don't have to give them that information. If the work's permitted, they know it. Are any of these adjacent or visible from the house? Commercial property, and we're going to put that down. What kind of commercial property is it? Um, it's a okay, and we're going to put that down. So we're going to actually also type that down here. Other facts. Street. Street. Oh, a double yellow line? Yeah. Okay. It's right off so we're put that top. down. House is adjacent. Bus stop? Bus stop? Yeah. Eh, don't worry about that too much. House is adjacent to mechanic shop, and mechanic shop is noisy and uh, go. at all hours. Okay? High traffic. High traffic. <coughs> okay, there you go. High traffic's a good one. Um, what you put in this other fact section is anything that you think affects the value of your house. If there's an abandoned house on your street, you put that down. There's illegal rentals on your street, you put that down. You're next to a leaking gas station, you put that down. Now, what you want to do is you also want to distinguish your house from the compromise. And this is good, people here will know this. I grew up in Lindbergh, and I grew up on the Westwood, which you know takes the train, you know, the train comes through Hempstead. I grew up on Fenimore Street. I grew up on this street. No, right around the corner. I think I'm a few years old. All right. Uh, so I grew up on uh, Fenimore Street and on Whitehall Street, which had some very nice houses on it. The train came right behind the house. Literally, from me to the gentleman in the yellow jacket, they would, the train would come through every morning. And you, you had friends there too, right? I'm on it every day, 7.30. Okay, yeah, so it's a great train. I rode it to law school. Okay? I mean, it's you know one of the best things about living in that section. Right. Okay? Um, but that train goes right behind people's houses. Now, I would hear the train. I lived about a quarter mile away. So I would put, if I was grieving that house, I'd say I'm a quarter mile from the train. I hear the train at 4.30 in the morning. But the problem with that is all my comparables, the houses that are in my neighborhood, are the same thing, the same problem. They're all half, they're all by the train. They all hear the train. You're a quarter mile from the train. It's like you said, it's a big advantage. You walk to the train, you walk home, it's great. You live on Whitehall Street, and that train is rumbling down your backyard at 4.30 in the morning. You're in a different situation than all the comparables, and you want to make sure you're compared to only homes that are on Whitehall Street or a similar situation where they hear that, ha that train at the same time, the same way you do. The other thing, if you need a lot of work on your house, this, you can put that in. So, for, for example, if you're in Baldwin and you need a bulkhead, bulkheads are very expensive. If you have two houses 
that are exactly the same on the water. One needs a new bulkhead and the other has a new bulkhead. Which home's going to sell for more money? The one with the better roof. Um, no, <laughs> the, the one with the new bulkhead. So if you have a major repair, you got you should let them know, and that's when you let them know. And you're going to be able to upload photographs of those major repairs that need to be done. You can upload a contract for sale. You can, up, let's say you're on the market and you're listed for less than your uh, value, okay, for what your house is assessed at. Um, you can upload that listing. It was really funny. We had one member of the group from Manhattan. She was complaining that her house has been on the market for six months without a bite and it's on the market for less than the assessed value. And so I looked at the multiple listing. And I wrote back, this would be a lot more convincing if you weren't the realtor. <laughs> <laughs> and it would have been. Because I'm sure she's not, you know, I, I shouldn't say that. I suspect she's not showing the house. But she's using the listing as a basis to get a reduction on her assessment. Now, if she was the realtor, you know, but it shows as her being the realtor. And so the first thing that jumped into my mind is maybe this isn't all that up and up. And maybe it is. Yep. But I had questions. All right. Yes, sir. Question. You said something I was aware of. You had houses that were record. Didn't you go? Yeah. You put them up. You have to give them up now? No, you don't have to give them up, but you can, you know, you, if you gave them up, you might get rid of them. If you gave them up, you might get a better reduction. But, you know, this affects the value of your house. There are sections of Belmore, um, over by, you know, where the Army base used to be, where every second house has two or three tenants in it. And it just became known as an area where a lot of people were renting. And that does affect the value of the house. Unfortunately, it affected the value up because everybody knew they could buy out one family and rent out the you know, room. Um, I put it down. Lots of illegal rentals, no parking on the street. Yep. Now, that, that's what fair. do you consider as the needs work? Is it just needs a floor? Is it like electric? You know, something more than average maybe. They assume your house is in average condition. You know, 20-year-old kitchens are pushy. So, you know, my kitchen's 30 years old. But again, let's say they give you, they say your kitchen's 30 years old. What are they valuing the kitchen at? About 50, you know, $40,000. So, you're talking $40 on your assessed value. Um, it's not a big difference. But it's something worth putting in. At least now, when we talk about what are these additions and subtractions to your house worth? We can understand in real numbers. And if, when tax rates come out, we're really going to understand it. Because right now we can't really, don't, we don't know what a difference of assessment of 40 is on a house. But when the new tax rates come out in October, we're going to have a really good idea. We'll be able to do that like this. If it's, you know, if it's old to the point that it needs replacement and is dangerous, Yes. Okay. If it's old, and because you, you know you, you, know, you got the old fuses, um, yeah. I, if you have fuses, I'd show the fuse box. But that's only a three thousand dollar repair. So what's it going to save you on your assessment? Um, if you need all new wiring because it's all aluminum, and you can get a uh, contractor to write you up an estimate. Yes. 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 Not two for about one and a half. And last year, I mean, about half month. Should I put it down to the board? What, did you add in a half fast or got rid of it? I did not add one and a half. Right. But last year, I put it down to the first floor, not a half month. Should I put it down? What did you do to the half fast? Did you got rid of it? Did you, have a, did you have a contract to get rid of it? Renovated. Oh, yeah, renovated. Renovated. Oh, now that's between you and your God. Okay, no, it's not between you and your account. Okay? Yes. One more question. So, what about the, the, the stove that I have in the basement? Because I've brought the house with the stove in the basement. Okay, I only worry about it if they list your home as a two family. If when you grieve it shows your house as being a two family home, I get rid of the stove in the basement <coughs> and go back to a one family home. My guess is they don't know about the stove in the basement. So don't worry about it. But check to make sure they have you as a one-family home. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, then enjoy cooking the basement for you. <laughs> I, like, I like brownies, I like chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> I take my coffee light with a little bit of sweet and low. We're good. All right. Um, school? You want to choose the school that is your, in, in your district. You could. You know, if there are problems in the school, um, you could put that down. Um, are you right talking now, live near a school or? Yeah, oh. Yeah, you can put that down, because there's traffic, there's noise. Um, I mean, there was really an interesting, one of these really interesting questions I got in the group last week, is a guy lived with his back in the school. And it was never a big deal, because all the activity in the yard was on the other side of the, you know, one acre yard, you know, field. But then they moved the baseball field to his side. So, all of a sudden, you know, every Saturday morning, there are kids playing baseball, you know, outside the house. Now, I would sell tickets, but he's not happy. <laughs> right. so, you know, so, so, excuse me, firehouse? Is there a firehouse for you? That's a good thing if you're on fire. <laughs> well, wait, why don't we put down firehouses right there? And, uh, you know, firehouses are good things, you know, except when they have parties. Yeah. Firehouse is all good, right? How far away is the firehouse? It's like a block. Firehouse is a block away and very noisy. A lot of traffic. Yes, sir. The house of the daughter and mother, does the town have to visit it for years? No, they don't. Okay, they'll just keep it as a two family until you tell them it's no longer a two family. The town, okay, that, I'm sorry, the county for assessment purposes won't visit. The town, to give you your permit, um, to renew your permit, will visit. But that's between you and the town. It has nothing to do with your assessment. Go from mother and daughter to one family. Yes. Okay. Yes. Are you keeping it a mother daughter? Okay. Then that then you're sh probably going to show up as a two family on assessment, and that's fair. Okay. That's how they consider it. You might want to write it's a mother daughter. You know, unless you're renting it out to someone who's not a mother or daughter. If you are, then you know, put down that it's a mother daughter with rented to a family member that's being used by a family. Member. All right. Let's. Scroll down. Those are the only things you can think of that are wrong with your house. Yes, yes. All right. And your relation to the property, you are the owner. So we're going to click relation to the property, current owner of record. What did you submit? You just got to, where you put firehouse is right. Oh, okay. It is right. Is right is a block. It is a block board. Thank you. See, smart guys from Lindbergh. Lindbergh Strong. All right. Okay, so we scroll down. Yvonne, do I have your permission to submit the application? Sure. Okay, so we're going to submit the application for you. You've got an appeal number 2473628. You'll get an email to your email address. It's going to go through the email address. Yes, you'll get that by email. But you'll get your reduction, and you get a reduction by letter. Now, what's going to happen in 12, in 6 to 12 months, Yvonne's going to get a letter that says you don't get a reduction. <laughs> They're going to keep your assessment at 591. Most people this year got very similar letters to that because the assessed values are much closer than they've been in the past years. The goals are really accurate. What do you do then? You should be a member of my group because you'll ask, what do I do? I got a zero. And I'll tell you then, you reject the zero and request a conference. A lot of people who rejected the zero and got a conference have gotten reductions. I got one guy got a 17% reduction after rejecting a zero, but a lot of people got two, three percent reductions. Yes. You're not guaranteed a conference. You can request a conference. You're not guaranteed a conference. Uh, sorry, yes. Uh, I'm, uh, actually, what I understand, uh, Part E, recent sales. Of, uh, yeah. They, the county gives you those sales. They give you sales. You want to find sales within two years. I just want to show optional. It's optional. But, but, you know, it's optional if you want to win. It's not optional. Okay. If you want to lose, don't fill it in. Be like the grievance firms that don't fill it in. Okay? Um, not all grievance firms. Some of them fill it in. Some don't. But you're here to learn how to do this right. To do this right, you're going to find compromise. Most houses can find one or two um, that work. Now I just want to show you something quick. quick. Um, if you wanted to add photos, 
you wanted to add a contract to sell, you wanted to add your multiple listing service listing, you want to add bills or something from your know, phone related to the house, you click on this viewer add attachments right here. And it asks, no documents are found. You click on yes, and then you can search your computer and put whatever documents you want to put in. Okay? Now this is interesting. If is let's say you got a reduction for 2021. And now you're assessed higher than what you were assessed for uh, 2021, 22, they assess you higher. You can show them that ARC reduced my assessment in 2021. Now they'll know it by then. But you can actually upload it. That's actually new. That's, that was never there before. You can put leases in, you can put anything you want. So that is how you file a tax grievance. And yeah, I'll just answer a few more questions. All right, you're all done. All right, I do like trouble. <laughs> We don't want to change Now the number is the point one zero zero is real. You can attach the appraisal. Yeah, I would attach the appraisal in comps. Hundred percent. Excuse me. Yes. Who are we filing grievance for? Twenty. Twenty. As I said, you're, you're filing your grievance now for twenty one twenty two. That means it doesn't show up in your tax bill until 2021, October. Oh, okay. You're a year behind. What happens is now, it used to be that you'd file and you'd get a reduction and the county would have to give you a refund. Now, you just don't pay the increased taxes. Okay, so now one year is already on with the increased taxes, like last year? Uh, last year is done. If you've got an increased tax bill last year, that's your tax bill. There's nothing I can do to lower it. Okay. All you can do is grieve to lower it in the future. Yeah. Now, it's just they add a little bit of a square footage value, but not a lot. All right. Are there any way they can reject the um, the three percent that they they just gave you? Then you have to go to store with it. Then you better be sure you're going to win. Yeah. Um, I know it's 206 on market value previously, now it's 425. Because yeah, you're going to get a reduction. That 206 to a 425 is no, a purchase. 206 was before. Yeah. And now it's uh, the market value. Right. So now the county sell you, you want to sell your house for 425? We are putting that uh, market value. You want to sell your house for 425? I'm asking you right now. I don't know. It looks like the house is out there. Yeah, it looks like that's the value of your house. If it was previously 206 and they now have you at 425, you're not going to pay more taxes as a result of reassessment. The old 206 was a lot. Okay. You know, I'll give you two. Uh, you know, I, I, let, let me ask you, you know, I paid a lot of money to the uh, attorneys before when I filed a grievance, and all of a sudden when it went to 425, I was thinking, that's really The down. attorneys did a really good job to get your house down to 206. Yeah, yeah. but now I'm, I'm concerned that I didn't file last year, and it could be. You need to file this year. This year. Yes. Um, do you recommend it should be to the attorney? Or? No, I recommend that you do it yourself. Yes, sir. All right, this is what we just said to spend yeah. an hour. This, what this, I mean, I answered, you know, 30 questions. I came late. I, okay. I answered 30 questions. I filed this woman's grievance. I entertained you. It still took an hour. Hey, come on. But I came after an hour. I'm going to walk in the valley street. No, seriously. It's so easy. I mean, this is really easy. I, every 